My family, this week, the world marks Baby Loss Awareness Week, which is held annually from 9th October to 15th October. And my family, we all know what happened to Harry Meghan. They both suffered the pain of losing their unborn child. And today, I want to remind you all of Megan's opinion piece for the New York Times titled, The Losses We Share. Of Megan describing what happened on the day she lost her unborn child. My family, please kindly hear what Megan said. You know, in an opinion piece for the New York Times titled, The Losses We Share. My family, Megan said this under quote. It was a July morning that began as ordinarily as any other day. Make breakfast, feed the dogs, take vitamins, find that missing sock, pick up the rogue crayon that rolled under the table, throw my air in a ponytail before getting my son from his crib. After changing his diaper, I felt a sharp cramp. I dropped to the floor with him in my arms, humming a lullaby to keep us both calm. The cheerful tune as a contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second. Hours later, I lay in a hospital bed, holding my husband's hand. I felt the clumminess of his palm and kissed his knuckles, wet from both our tears. Staring at the cold white walls, my eyes glazed over. I tried to imagine how we'd heal. I recalled a moment last year when Harry and I were finishing up a long tour in South Africa. I was exhaust exhausted. I was exhausted. I was breastfeeding our infant son. And I was trying to keep a brave face in the very public eye. Are you okay? A journalist asked me. I answered him, honestly, not knowing that what I said would resonate with so many new moms and older ones. And anyone who had in their own way, been silently suffering. My off-the-cuff reply seemed to give people permission to speak their truth. But it wasn't responding honestly that helped me most. It was the question itself. Thank you for asking, I said. Not many people have asked if I'm okay. My family, I recall this moment, this time, of when Megan was basically being bullied every day by the UK media. And Tom Bradby asked Megan if she's okay, are you okay? And my family, Megan told Tom Bradby, 
Thank you for asking. Not many people have asked if I'm okay. You know, my family, I want you to remember Megan's words on this week. Actually, I want you to remember forever. And even on this baby loss awareness week, I want you to remember Megan's words. Because when you see other members of the royal family trying to imply or call themselves mental health advocates like what William and Kate are trying to do and have been doing, remind them of the part they played in putting Megan through so much suffering in all the anti Harry Omega stories leaked by Kensington Palace, headed by William and Kim Walton. Remind them of that to expose their hypocrisy of William and Kim Walton calling themselves mental health advocates. And my family, it's so sad what Megan was put through. And what angers me the most really is that despite everything that Megan was enduring, not once did the past demand that UK media stop the attacks and abuse of Meghan Markle, even when Meghan was pregnant, even when they knew that Meghan was suffering from suicidal thoughts, the palace still did not care. My family, when Meghan wanted to check into a mental health clinic, my family, the palace told her, you know what? It will look bad on us if you do that. So don't. My family, remember that when you see William and Cableton pretending that they're mental health advocates. Please kindly remember that. And my family, this pain that Megan felt, I hope she keeps on healing. My family, Megan then said this, in our opinion piece for the New York Times, my family. Sitting in a bed in hospital, watching my husband's heart break as he tried to hold the shattered pieces of mine. I realized that the only way to begin to heal is to first ask, are you okay? Are we? This year has brought so many of us to our breaking points. Loss and pain have plagued everyone of us in 2020. In moments both fraught and also debilitating, we've heard all the stories. A woman starts her day as normal as any other, but then receives a call that she's lost her elderly mother to COVID-19. A man wakes feeling fine, maybe just a little sluggish, but nothing out of the ordinary. He tastes, he tests positive for the COVID-19 virus. And within weeks, B, like hundreds of thousands of others, has died. My family, this was by Megan. It just reminds me of what happened to my late father. My father's name was Paul, my family, and he had diabetes, my family. And he had a diabetic foot. And my family, I recall what a doctor told us. Everything will be okay. Everything will be fine. And then one morning, I'm getting a phone call from my sister telling me that my father is not breathing well. 
is struggling to breathe. My family, by the time that I get to the hospital, I'm told that my father has had six to seven heart attacks. My family. Cardiac arrest. That's what I'm told. And suddenly, you're being escorted to, to go and see him. And when we go to see him, I could just see the monitor there. It, it had just flatlined my family. I still thought everything is okay. I go in. And I'm told my father is not, is not breathing. He's, he's gone. He's gone. And my family, that was in November 2020. November 16th, 2020. I'll never forget that day. It was really one of the worst days of my entire life. Really, the worst day of my life. So, 2020 was a bad year. A very, very bad year that I'll never forget. And my family, just hearing these words from Meghan Markle, you know, the losses we share. I can personally feel her words. You know, I can feel her words. And thank you, Megan, for what you are saying. Thank you. And I'm sorry that you yourself suffer the pain of losing a child. I'm sorry, Megan. I'm sorry. My family, I recall holding my father. I said, I'm here. I'm here, Dad. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. He would not wake up anymore. He would not. Call my mother, tell her that she isn't waking up. It was the worst day of my life. It was the worst day of my life. But God has been faithful to all of us and, and God has helped us, my family. And I also believe that God also has helped both Megan and Harry. My family. Let me just clearly continue my family. What Megan said, a young woman named Brianna Taylor goes to sleep just as she has done every night before. But she does not live to see the morning because a police raid turns horribly wrong. George Floyd leaves a convenience store, not realizing he will take his last breath under the weight of someone's knee. And in his final moments, calls out for his mom. Peaceful protests become violent. Health rapidly shifts to sickness. In places where there was once community, there is now division. On top of all of this, it seems we no longer agree on what is true. We aren't just fighting over our opinions or facts. We are polarized over whether the fact is, in fact, a fact. We are at odds over whether science is real. We are at odds over whether an election has been won or lost. We are at odds over the value of compromise. That polarization coupled with the social isolation required to fight this pandemic has left us feeling more alone than ever. When I was in my late teens, I sat in the back of a taxi, zipping through the busyness and bustle of Manhattan. I looked out the window and saw a woman on her phone in a flood of tears. She was standing on the sidewalk, living out a private moment very publicly. At the time, the city was new to me. And I asked the driver if we should stop 
to see if the woman needed help. He explained that New Yorkers live out their personal lives in public spaces. We love in the city. We cry in the street. Our emotions are stories there for anybody to see. I remember him telling me, don't worry, somebody on that corner will ask her if she's okay. Now, all these years later, in isolation and lockdown, grieving the loss of a child, the loss of my country's shall belief in what is true. I think of that woman in New York. What if no one stopped? What if no one saw her suffering? What if no one helped? I wish I could go back and ask my cab driver to pull over. This, I realize, is the danger of siloed living. Where moments sad, scary, or sacrosanct are all lived out alone. There is no one stopping to ask, are you okay? Losing a child means carrying an almost unbearable grief. Experienced by many, but talked about by few. In the pain of our loss, my husband and I discovered that in a room of 100 women, 10 to 20 of them will have suffered from miscarriage. Yet despite the staggering commonality of this pain, the conversation remains taboo. Riddled with unwarranted shame and perpetuating and perpetuating a cycle of solitary mourning. Some have bravely shared their stories. They have opened the door knowing that when one person speaks truth, it gives license for all of us to, to do the same. We have learned that when people ask how any of us are doing, and when they really listen to the answer with an open heart and mind, the Lord of grief often becomes lighter for all of us. In being invited to share our pain, together we take the first steps towards healing. And so, this Thanksgiving, as we plan for holiday, unlike any before, many of us separated from our loved ones, alone, sick, scared, divided, and perhaps struggling to find something, anything to be grateful for. Let us commit to asking others, are you okay? As much as we may disagree, as physically distant, distant, distanced as we may be, the truth is that we are more connected than ever because of all we have individually and collectively endured this year. We are adjusting to a new normal where faces are concealed by masks, but it is forcing us to look into one another's eyes. Sometimes filled with warmth, other times with tears. For the first time in a long time as human beings, in a long time as human beings, we are really seeing one another. Are we okay? We will be. And the path of healing, of healing, the path of healing may begin with three words. Are you okay? Megan, I'm doing better. For me personally, I am doing better. You know, I don't think anyone can ever forget when you lose a parent. Or maybe even a child. But time can help you heal. And also, I find that prayer also helps so much. It helps so much, my family. So also, I tell anybody to pray. To pray when they've lost a loved one. Pray every day and never, ever stop praying. Never stop praying. Prayer heals. Prayer heals. It heals so much. So please, don't stop praying. My family, once again, this is this week is Baby Loss Awareness Week, my family. 
And also, I want to go to what Harry said himself about the loss of his unborn child, my family. You know? What Harry said, because I find that Harry's words also, you know, are very, very important to my family. You know, of what he and Megan endured. My family. Here is what happened, my family. Here is what happened, my family. And I quote, There was a pressing issue with her legal case against the tablets. Megan's case against UK Media. Daily Mail. The mail was up to its usual tricks. Their first crack at offering a defense had been patently ridiculous. So now they were trying a new defense. It was even more ridiculous. They were arguing that they had printed Meg's letter to her father because of a story in Pool magazine, which quoted a handful of Meg's friends anonymously. And the tablets argued that Meg had orchestrated these quotes, used her friends as de facto spokespeople, and as the male had every right to publish her letter to her father. More, they now wanted the names of Meg's previously anonymous friends read into the official court record to destroy them. And Meg was determined to do everything in her power to prevent that she had been staying up late, night after night, trying to work out how to save these people. And now, on our first morning in the new house, he reported abdominal pains and bleeding, and then she collapsed the floor. We raced to the local hospital. When the doctor walked into the room, walked into the room, I did not hear one word she said. I just watched her face, her body language. I already knew. We both did. There had been so much blood. Still hearing the words was a blow. Meg grabbed me. I held her. We both wept. In my life, I felt totally helpless only four times. In the back of the car. While mommy and Willie and I were being chased by paps. In the Apache above Afghanistan. Unable to get clearance to do my duty. To do my duty. I had not caught when my pregnant wife was planning to take her life. And now. We left the hospital with our unborn child. At any package. We went to a place. A secret place. Only we knew. And a spreading banyan tree. While Meg wept, I dug a hole with my hands and set the tiny packet softly in the ground. That's what Harry said about what happened to his child, the loss of his unborn child, my family. You know? And to Harry Megan. I hope you keep on healing from what you have endured at the hands of the UK media. As you can see, really, Harry tells you, clearly he blames Daily Mail for causing Megan to, for putting so much stress, you know, on Megan, for making Megan be so, so stressed because of a court case in my family, that Megan suffered, you know, a miscarriage in my family. And Harry won't ever forgive UK media for the pain they've caused him, for the loss of his unborn child. He really just won't forgive them. Or my family, let me just kindly say this, because Harry did say, you know, when talking to William and Charles, that he might even learn to forgive the press. But what he won't be able to get over is Charles and Williams' complicity in the smear campaign against, you know, Megan and Harry also. My family, let me just say that Harry may forgive them, but he'll never ever want anything 
to do with them. They'll never want to whine or dine with Daily Mail or their so-called reporters. My family, he'll never ever want that because of what they've done to him. Because of the pain that they have put him and Megan through. And my family, Harry is right in wanting nothing to do with the toxic tabloid press. For my family, I applaud him for always protecting his family. And I'm so sorry about the pain that they endured when they lost their unborn child. And may they continue healing from the pain they endured. And my family, also, allow me to also kindly just say this to all, you know, moms also, who are in this family, who have suffered the pain of losing a child. Also, I pray you are able to heal. Be it an unborn child or a baby that was born and then sadly passed away. I pray that you're able to heal from the pain of losing a child. Please pray because I find that prayer really helps when you've lost a loved one. Please, please pray. Please, please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Prayer helps. And thank you, Megan, for your opinion piece on the losses we share, on the losses we share. And thank you for your words, Megan. Thank you for your words. It really, really means a lot. And your words really are very much comforting, Megan. So thank you. Thank you to you and also to Prince Harry for being amazing people, amazing human beings, and also helping out others. You know, one thing that I like about Harry and Megan is that no matter what has been thrown at them, still, they always are true to who they are. People who always want to do good. And my family, because they are good people in my family, Harry and Meghan will keep on being blessed because they are good. Because they have good hearts. They are kind. They are full of compassion. And no wonder Harry and Meghan will keep on being blessed because my family, they are good, good, amazing human beings and good, good people in my family. And may they always know just how much they are loved, admired, and respected. My family, after all this also, even the audacity of Daily Mail and other tablets, you know, demanding access to Harry Megan. You know, my family, after even reading this memoir, how can Daily Mail go and whine, mourn, complain that Prince Harry and Megan don't want them at any event or wherever they go? They don't want Daily Mail reporters or correspondents or all experts. They don't want them anywhere near them. And my family, they, Daily Mail, actually are whinging, mourning, and complaining because of that. You know, after everything they put Megan through, and Harry, a child has been lost. Harry lost his mother. My family, lives have been lost. But still, you're having UK media and clothes online continue this smear campaign against Harry Megan. My family, may they never ever succeed in this evil hate campaign and smear campaign against Harry Megan. And may Harry and Meghan keep on healing on the pain they've endured and experienced at the hands of the toxic tablet press. My family, kindly please tell me your thoughts about what we have just discussed, Kylie. i like to please kindly hear your opinion, my family. God bless Harry, Meghan, Archie, Libertana, and Doria Ragland. And all of you, members who are at home. And may Harry and Meghan keep on healing. And if you've lost a child, you know, a parent, a loved one, I pray that you also are able to heal. And take comfort in these words straight from the Bible, my family. These sufferings today don't compare to the joy that is coming. Stay tuned to our next video. Love you always and forever. Hello, members of the Zesco Family TV. First of all, I want to say thank you for all your support that you give us to our channel. We don't take it for granted that you support this channel. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for lending out your support and fighting against injustices, supporting Prince Harry and Meghan, showing them love. Love will always triumph over evil and for that I say thank you. Good will always prevail over bad. Thank you so much for all your support. 
Thank you so much for joining this community, this amazing community of Zesco Family TV. I love you so much, family, from the bottom of my heart, and I wish you all the best. May you have a great, great day, and I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a lot of things. With that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Love you, family, always and forever. Sayonara.